everyone, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all keeping fit and well. Some time ago, we made two woven bags. Now, I have them here. One, this one was based on Matisse, a piece of artwork from Matisse. Just look at the background. Now, the whole of this background, if you remember, it was woven on a small loom, actually. This was the loom that it was woven on. Um, it's it's walked up for something else at the moment but if you can remember this I'll make it smaller and you might be able to see it um, if I show you the top you might remember this picture frame loom which I used for to make the, the woven backgrounds for these bags so I'll just hold that up so we had the woven here and the warp was done with different threads and fibers and the warp is the thread if you remember that comes right the way down this way and the weft is the thread that goes across we'll, we'll um, mention that later again so look there's some of the woven there on this this part and this one is from another artist inspired by another artist this tote bag fully lined I'm sure some of you will remember it and there's the fish uh, yeah the fish and the star um, but like you once again just to focus if you can on the background on the weaving here and this was worked on the same picture loom that I've just shown you and this one is clearer here you can see the weft threads going across here and once again the warp threads have been made up with different fibers to give that nice texture and up here as well so the background the woven background on this is more prominent than on the first bag and this one has got the fringe on here which I always said that I would trim and even on my face-to-face -face, uh, class when I took this in and I hung it up and I said oh, you know while everybody is working today <laughs> while you're all weaving ignore me because I'm actually going to start trimming this and the overall um, opinion was no Teresa leave it leave it and they liked this now I think it's too it's too long but the class that Tess and I were teaching on liked it so I looked at Tess and she looked at me and she said no she said leave it she liked it as well so um, that's that anyway it's not about this bag oh look at me I'm getting carried away it's about the weaving now <laughs> just just make a note of these all these fabrics here because I'm going to use the leftovers for our next project now this project is about scraps and here they are I've got a load more on the floor because we'll be using quite a lot now it's about using up all your scraps I have lots and lots like you all I expect make this smaller of oh. And those of you who remember the slow stitch mindful journals, the fabric journals um, that I did about two years ago now, might remember the very small examples here um, that made up a page or two in the fabric journals. This is all weaving as well and that is all done with bits and pieces, really, really short bits. I mean that little piece there must be about three inches long um, the warp is going down and of course the weft is going across all with little tiny pieces um, I'm going to show you some right you can ignore that page there here's another example I did with the weaving um, the warp thread on this one is string it's a very fine string or twine going all the way down and the weft is just a collection of ribbons 
there's some cords here then there's a variety of textured wool and inter, inter, um, interface not interface and there's a variety of textured wool there with little pieces of fabric interwoven more twine and our favorite <laughs> vegetable orange bag there so that is another way of using up your pieces um little scraps and this last one i mean the class that i did this with they really loved this and all this is it's um it's a woolen wool warp and chopped up felt well I say chopped up out of the rag bag so it was chopped up pieces of felt and this is plastic packing packing um, that you wrap cups and breakables in when you're sending them or moving and that is just um, a plain piece of see-through transparent plastic and this I believe was wool and a little bit of scrap but once again these are all scraps and it really is great fun I just recently I've had do, 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 four requests to do some weaving now I'm not talking about face-to-face -face class classes that is actually coming up and this what I'm doing at the moment is for that class but as you know I like to share like to share what I'm doing with my with um, my all sewn uppers who when you're watching this are textile students so I like to share it with you so this will be a face-to-face -face lesson of, of the start of a face-to-face -face lesson but um, of course I like to bring you along as well so I'm using up these now you've seen these before all these scrap well you've just seen them on the bag haven't you now as I said I have a lot more down there that I've been stripping and stranding for this quite a big project that I'll be doing but I'm going to start for all that you who want a recap or you haven't done weaving before I'm going to start with a cardboard loom now the cardboard loom are just as they sound and they can be as big or as small as you want them to be. I'm going to start the class with a very small cardboard loom and this is just over four by, yeah it's, I'm going to say it's four and a half by four and a half inches. That, oh look, I expect you're all sick of seeing these these COVID tests but the boxes look at that thank you NHS this box was supplied by the NHS complete with I think it was seven tests but the card is really lovely so I, I've kept my boxes for the frames and this is what I'm going to use now I'm not going to use this pattern side because this the background will play with the fabrics I'm going to use and just make one big confused mess in my head so I'm going to use the plain side so I do advise that you use the plain side of your fabric of your um, your card now once again these are from the same box now you don't have to do it this way not at all you don't have to put these in which I'm about to do now you can use your loom flat but I find just by popping in two strips of card one here and one there it just raises your your warp thread and don't forget the warp goes down it just raises your warp thread and makes the needle easier to get in but as I said you don't have to do this now you can use any glue to stick these down now these are the length or the width because I'm looking side on to me this is the length but it isn't it to you it's the width so you can see this part here this little piece here and that one they're the width and they are an inch thick 
okay that's 2.5 centimeters and I'm going to move them down put them in place at half an inch so I'm going here that's about half an inch there to there and I'm just going there from there to there that's half an inch there and then I'm going to move down here and do the same well that's a raggy old end but that won't matter so half an inch about there about there join those up right so these strips will now go one will go there and one will go there you can make them narrower if you like but these suit me okay now you can use any glue you want you can use this extra strong it's all purpose what I say is wet adhesive sticky sticky glue or you can use your prit stick the prit will take a bit longer to use but because I have been using this today I'm just going to use a glue gun but you really don't need the glue gun so just going to stick that over there like that and then line it up here now you you really need to get this exact and you'll see why in a minute so this part here this part here needs to be exact so don't slope it try and keep it as straight as possible there and here because we're going to use it um, for, for something else in a minute as a form of measuring so so that once again needs to go there it looks a dodgy half an inch but according to that it's half an inch right so those are, those are done already and the only thing with using a glue gun is that the effects are immediate and you don't really get any time to reposition it look at that it's stuck solid but you don't need a glue gun these will be just just fine now the next thing to do we're going to make little slots here this from here and here for the warp thread and don't forget the warp thread goes that way okay and the easiest way to remember that is warp is spelt w a r p extend the p p and put an arrow there and that is your warp it goes down weft is W E F T and the T the arrow goes that way on the top and that's how I teach that and that's how people re tend to remember it so weft the T goes straight the way across with the arrow and the warp goes down the P with the arrow that way so anyway getting back to this you want a fine pair of scissors like this and I'm reckon, reckoning to make about 16 I'd like about 16 warp threads down here now the warp threads will depend on how thick you want your threads if you were going to use something like this obviously you would only want so one two three four it five at a pinch five or something like this you might want what one two three four five six seven eight nine at a pinch but I'm going to use some of this now this is an ideal chance to get rid of that bird's nest of thread now I've already used a lot of mine so this isn't too bad but the one that I used earlier on oh my goodness it was dreadful but I've used up all those threads those long threads the shorter threads those that are all matted I've used them all up rather than just put them away for another project or um, throw them even because they weren't up to much I'm using them on this for the warp threads so because it's very fine you can see well you know it's six strands so it is fine I'm 
going to do about 16 warp threads so the first thing I want to do is just mark the middle the middle of this so I get them basically even but it, it really doesn't matter so we want one two three four one two so that's the middle there and that's the middle oh where's that line going about there okay so I know that I need about eight snips either side so with this I'm just going to start snipping um, not too far to the end because that would be a weak spot so we want one sixteen so we have sixteen you might see it better that way sixteen snips that go as far as your raised piece here now if you don't put a raised piece of card there still draw the line at half an inch and just snip to that half an inch line I'm just going to turn it round and do the same here now they don't have to be exact you can just approximate by looking one you know you've got to get eight to there so one Oh, 16. <laughs> 17. I've got 17 in that one. No, With the end here, I'm just going to knot, make a little knot around the first one here. And just tie a knot. Leave about two inches, about five centimeters hanging. Around the, and just push it around the back. And then we're going to take what is now the warp thread. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, I'm all thumbs. Right, we're going to take that warp thread round the back through the first, through the first snip, right the way down here, round the back there, and up. And that's all we're going to do from one end round the snip you go round the back to the other all the way across and when you get to the end you just finish off like you did as you started round the end one there and just a little knot just going to make a little knot there a little tie there just tie that like that and that should be fine just a couple of inches now what I will do with this one because it isn't secured as tightly as the first one I'm just going to pop a little bit of sellotape over this thread so it doesn't walk so it doesn't loosen and loosen the warps now as I got to here with the last warp you can see what's happened I ran out of thread so all I've done is make a knot there and I've carried on now that doesn't matter about the knot because that will be hidden and I had to remember as well I had an extra snip there so there we are there's our frame so our frame now is nicely warped. It's all warped up with the warp threads. And they're nice and tight. So the next thing to do is thread your needle and think about your thread. Now you have you can use any needle that's that you like that you want to use. You could use one of these nice big plastic ones that will go right the way through. Or you can use a darning needle. You could even make something out of card by just make it. You could make like a shuttle out of card that will go. That you can wind your thread around and just you'd have to neaten that off. And you could do that. But what I'm using, I'm using this big, big needle now. I found this in my workbox 
I found four actually. I've got a feeling I ordered these some time ago to, for doll making, for attaching the arms, so going right the way through the doll's body to attach both arms together at the same time. But reminds me of my grandfather. My grandfather was an upholsterer and he had all sorts of wonderful fabrics as you can imagine um, but he also had these really wonderful needles that were like sewing that were like knitting needles um, and I think maybe that's where I got my love for fabrics from and from my mum who um, loved fabrics but anyway yeah so this needle is actually one two three four five six inches long and I have one that's even longer but this is what I'm going to use now. Back to the task and hand. All we do to weave is we're going under, over, under, over, alternately. So if we start under, the next one will be over. Now I find it easy when I'm using the cardboard bit. Look, you can see how nicely raised that is. And it makes the needle easy to go in. So I find it easy to start here underneath the cardboard bit, but you do it your way. You might find it easier to start up there. So under, all right, look, I'm just going to make that bigger. So under, over, under, over, under, over under, over, under, over. So as you can see the needle there, it's under half of them and it's over the other half. And you just bring that through and that is your first whip. Now you can leave it like that, but I'm just going to flip it over because I want the right side showing so as you can see I just twisted that over and I'm just pushing it up there now you can do this and this is called beating down you can beat down with your fingers or with a fork but I actually do it with the needle on the next row so we're going to go back so we finished with an over so to alternate it we need to start with an under so under under over under over under over under over and we finished here the last which was actually the first thread is over so we finish Oh, sorry, the first one was under, so we finish with an over. Now look, with the needle, oops, with the needle, I'm pushing, beating that down. Now if you're doing it with a shorter needle, you can do it one by one. And there we go, that is the second. That's the second line row like so and you can push that down again like that now at this point I'm going to change thread so I'm going to snip that bit off there because I only need about five centimeters two inches hanging there and then I'm going to choose another thread um, ooh. And the, once again, you've seen these before. So most of, well, all the fabric that I'm going to use on here, you all have seen before. So to just turn that round. We finished with an over. So we're going to start here with an under, over, under, over, under, over under over under and that is all there is to it now you could actually leave them like that 
double but I'm not going to I'm going to pull those through so I will carry on and do this until it's finished and then I start another now I, for the project that I'm going to do I'm guessing I might need 12 looms um, <laughs> that's my chair I'm moving <laughs> I'm guessing I'm going to need 12 of these looms so I'm going to make the 12 looms and then I'm going to carry on weaving on the 12 looms okay because once you've used these once that's it unless you're very very careful or light-handed which I'm not um, you can only get one use out of them so as I have said I'm going to carry on with that now there's no secrets to what happens at the end you just finish off like we finish off here just leave that and take it as far as you can go okay so I'm going to carry on and hopefully when I get back to you I'll have done the 12 blue so here's three um, and I'm quite pleased with these can't get any more on here but this is how they're looking and I am really pleased with that so the next step is to take them off the loom and this is quite a big step so I'm going to take one and show you how to do one and then I'll carry on and I will take the rest off okay so I'm going to carry on with just one and show you how to take that off the loom and what we're going to do after we've taken it off so the first thing to do I'm just going to trim the end here and this will make it easier um, to carry on and these pieces won't be flapping about all over the place now the next bit I always think oh this is such a good thing to do right now if I can get in the middle of that screen now I'm going to trim this back to as close to the stitches as I can possibly get without breaking the stitches so where are we now with my big scissors I'm just going to trim as close as I can get to the stitches right get rid of that and then I'm going to do the same this end as close to the scissors as, uh, as close to the stitches oh sorry as close to the stitches as possible get rid of those and then I'm going to slip the loops off and I find it easier to do it this way and get a nice needle, the darning needle, and just push them off the end. So just push each loop off the end, and as I say, it is a lot easier doing it this way. Now you can see that's come off lovely, and then just flip that over and just gently do the same here without pulling the weaving out of shape thing is by using stranded thread it's so easy just to actually strand this while you're using it while you're working on it I found that with the needle and um, while I was weaving between the weft threads that at some points it kept stranding and I was picking up just a couple of strands right so there we are there's the first one now that has obviously come out but it doesn't matter now we're going to mount this as we will do all 12 on a background fabric now I have chosen calico to mount that on but you can choose any other fabric because this won't be seen actually I think that's a tiny, tiny bit bigger and this is one, two, three, four, 
or just bigger than four and a half now that's going to go on there and I'm going to pin this you can machine sew around this if you have your, sa your sewing machine handy just machine sew just around here I would do it with a small zigzag or you can tack it you can tack it with a nice not too big a, a zigzag not the sort of zig um, tacking not the sort of tacking that we normally do just clipping you need to go through all the little warp threads so that's the next thing to do and I'm going to do that to all the 12 I've got and I will use my sewing machine and I'll go across all these okay so that's going to be a little bit of a task but I will get back I'm just going to we want a little bit of a border around here all right so I'm going to machine sew all the bits I've got now and I've done a zigzag stitch all the way around the edges just to firm them up a little bit I've kept about half an inch border all the way around the edge um, not so much here because I <laughs> snipped it too much on those ones <laughs> now there's quite a large one here and that's the one that I think I might have that might have been the demonstration one I can't remember but anyway that if I need to trim that that would be quite easy to trim oh it's not that much oh, I don't think it is actually you know what it is I think it's yeah I can see what I've done I've sewn that down the fringe down I've not trimmed that one so that should finish there which yeah no 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 problem no problem going to use this pink um, I sat and I debated whether to just join them in a, in rows or to space them out have one that way have one that way I don't think that I'm going way. to use them as they come out of the pile now this is waste as well this is scrap as well I've got some more over here and it's from an old curtain but it's all bits and pieces now what I've done along this piece it didn't look like this a couple of minutes ago it was all gathered up and it was rough and I've had to trim it I put a zigzag along that edge there because as you can look already it's fraying this is dreadful to fray but for fraying but I like the color I think the color pink here will go with the, all the colors here because these are predominantly red a little bit of green which complements red um, lace but that was purely by by um, accident. It just shows you the amount of colour, the cut sort of colours that I generally work with. If all these scraps all like, complement each other. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, I've decided, I'm going to put edge these at the moment. Right, I don't want to give this too much thought to be honest. I'm going to edge these. So I'm going to cut along here, right side to right side, because there is actually a right side to this, so it doesn't matter, um, right pins, I've managed to find some pins, these are quilting pins, so they're very long and they're very sharp, <laughs> they're too long for what I want, but hey ho, they're holding the fabric, so I'm going to so that there now I've decided I'm going to have four in a row I'm not sure what I'm going to do either end yet so I want to leave either end of what will be my row without a border because I don't know what I'm doing that end either end yet but I just want to put these join these in a strip so I need one there ah oh, hang on a minute yeah I'm going to do right okay right I'm going to pin this I don't want one this here I don't want one there that end there 
so I want one there, 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 and I don't want one this end, so I'm going to put a pin there, but all the others I want these borders on, so that one, that one hasn't got one there because that will be the end of the strip, but this one is another end, so I want that end free because that's the that is the bottom now, the bottom end, and I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So, and that one will go there. And I am going to machine sew these just along all these edges. So some of them will have two along the edges here. And that one as well, right the way along these edges, and there. Now after I've done that, I might join them. I think I'll, I'll then join them, but I'll get back as soon as I've done that. They've all been sewn together now. I just This is the only way I can get it in, on, on the screen, so I'll just unravel it a little bit. So you can see both ends are missing a pink border because as I explained I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the ends I just know that I want the piece of work this length so that's four blocks of weaving long it's about 24 inches long that now what I'm going to do is take this fabric again and I've for I've ironed it and I've neatened it because the fraying was just unbelievable. Now I'm going to place that on here and bring that down, take it level here. Right. If I do it that way you, you'll get a better idea. So let me, I'm just going to make that bigger move it up so you can see it right so at the end either end I'll extend it one two three three inches and put it against the last row unfortunately the last row here is white the last row of weaving and you can't see it on the screen so I'm going to edge that edge the pink border on the last row of weaving and I'm going to straighten it up all the way along so that piece there will have a haircut so I need to keep that straight a couple of pins to hold it down right, straighten it up along there which brings it back in line here lovely just pin that and that's okay there because that that can be trimmed off but not before it's sewn otherwise it will unravel and then straight along here so yeah it was only that one that was um a little bit extended so over here straight along here so we've got a nice straight line going on there and then I'll extend it this end another three inches so we go one two three roughly there oh wow look at that whoa I think I'm going to have to start piecing this now because luckily it is all scraps so there will be long pieces against short pieces and um, all scrappy which is nice, I quite like that effect. Right now I'm going to machine sew. Now I've put the border right the way along there, as you can see, all the way along here. And this bit here that needs trimming, I'm just going to trim that off now. Now what I have done, I've put a zigzag just along there, just along that bit there because I'm going to cut into that weaving and I don't want the weaving to unravel because I'm now cutting right the way across the warp yeah I had to think about that across the warp threads 
but the zigzag will stop that from unraveling so just that bit there has the zigzag stitch if you can see that zigzag and the straight stitch and there we have it I have ironed that now it's very samey at the moment and I really don't want the samey look so when I come to do the next I've got 12 more to do now I'm going to do the, the other 12 like this but I might turn them sideways so I end up with some long ones and some shorter otherwise it's going to be too samey I'd like a little bit of a bit more character than that so I might make some little blocks smaller up against the longer blocks we'll see anyway we'll see but I certainly don't want it rigid and uniform like so the next thing to do is with the other 12 to do the same and then I might possibly off camera attach them okay. now all I've done is attach all the strips as you can see here I've done the 12 rows of four just as I did the other piece this piece here and now what I'm going to do is attach this to this okay so you can see what I did now I did vary the size of the pieces of weaving um, I've got a small piece here I've got another small piece down here and there um, and here against the longer larger pieces now for added in you can't see that one down there yeah there's a oh gosh there's quite a lot missing from there there's a longer piece there so it also puts these like borders or they look actually look like bars it also changes the position of those now it's up to you whether you stagger yours or not but I like that um, and I think on a, a bigger piece that the effect would be um, more dramatic than it is on this small piece some of them the weft is going across and on others it's going down so they're not always going the same way you can so see on this here. one there'll only be three yeah I quite like that actually right hang on it that was that was really unintentional now which one do I want to lose I can lose one from either end um so all the others will have four four pieces of weaving blocks of weaving but this one will just have three but which three do i want right i like this one and that one and that one it boils down to which end ones do i prefer I'm going to get rid of that one right we're going to have right sides together right side to right side and pin I'm going to pin this all the way to the bottom and now I'm going to machine sew right the way down that seam okay for two minutes I put that along there that is the piece with the three uh, the three pieces of weaving and I actually like this piece I'm sorry that I didn't do them all that size now I think I just think that looks really nice that lovely piece there um, so there are three in that line there just the three there and the rest have got four but ranging in size now these don't match um, as you can see along here but that doesn't matter because I think I have plans for that anyway so the next thing to think about is the top here now because it's all scrap material I've had to I've had to add a piece up the top um, so I need to work with that piece there um, I need to add a border here and a border at the bottom along there 
Now I'm hoping that I might have enough in bits and pieces <laughs> to do it in pink, which will mean I will have to join it at some place. I can see that isn't long enough and I think that might be the longest piece I have. So, which will give three seams there, one, two, three, which is okay for me. But I might have to disguise that at some point. Uh, I might have to seam that there. So this is um, a bit of a headache now, knowing what to put along there. I feel like I want to put the pink there, but I don't know if I've got enough. You see, I like that effect here, this staggered effect coming down in steps here. Um, I just love this staggered effect. I know it won't be everybody's cup of tea, but I just like that because it's like patchwork, raw patchwork in weaving. And then we have the bits that we've cobbled together with scraps. Um, and it's not cost a penny. But anyway, back to the border. I'm going to spend some time sorting out these and seeing if I can actually get a strip that's long enough to go right the way across the top and the bottom without piecing it. If not, I will piece it and then disguise it later. It's hard okay. to get this on now, but I have put the other row, the last row on the edge here, and that's the row with the three long ones. So I'm just going to pull this up very, very slowly so you get an overall picture of what it's looking like. If you notice the lovely long one here against the short square one there, another short square one here and there. Um, and I just think this is looking really good at the moment. I'm just going to ease it up a little bit more and we have another lovely long one here and I like this bit because of the staggering here. I like that very much. I have found another strip but I didn't have, I don't think I've got to join. Ooh, no, just, just, just. Now I'm going to put this along there. I see that right side together. I've already zigzagged this this bit here to stop it fraying when I sew it. So this will go right sides together in the same way that the side bit um, was done. So a couple of pins just to hold it down. I don't need too many and that is nice and straight that edge there so there shouldn't be any problems with that. I'm going to put three pins there and just keep your fingers crossed that this piece I'm cutting off will go across the other end because I think that is just about it with this scrap. Right, so I'm just carefully going to pull this up now and do the other end here and that is the end there with the patch that's like the patch and it's had to be patched because of um, using scraps all these scraps but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter oh yes that goes very nicely so right side to right side here and pin so machine all the way down here if you haven't got a machine then very small row of running stitches using your thread double all the way along there or back stitch but I'm going to machine sew along there we machine sewn that top and bottom and I'm just going to bring it up slowly 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 just so you can see the bottom or the top <laughs> and that is the other end and now I'm going to hang it up and just look at it to see where I go from here. It isn't finished yet. Um, got some options, I think, at the moment, but this is likely to change. I can make a feature now of these, of the pink squares here. Or I can make a feature of these, the strips between. 
I can make a feature of them both actually across here across there now if I do that I might lose the stagger the bit that I actually like this stagger bit here I don't want to lose the focus of the card weaving I want to keep that but at the moment uh, I like the contrast between the busy busy weaving and the plain pink but this is very plain it's too plain at the moment so I need to embellish this a little bit some stitchery maybe perhaps I need to introduce a few curves to complement these to contrast with all these angles here yeah I think that's my next step reintroducing a softer shape but where so and a what in but anyway I'm going to now just leave it for a while and do something else walk away do something else and um, probably go to the park for a while this was the first idea that I came up with I thought I'm going to use the the strips between the weaving as a warp thread it was just crying out to be used as a warp thread so I thought if I use that as the warp thread that goes down the work then I can do some mock weaving across it the over the under uh, the over and try and give the impression of weaving on the pink so I did this and put it on the wall and spent last night looking at it thinking no no there's it's not it's not right it's not right it's the scruffy stage I know it's the scruffy stage but it this just doesn't feel right so I still like the idea of having these as warp threads so my next thought was I don't know if it's too pink now I love pink and for me to say it might be too pink I mean I've never ever said that before but there's something not sitting right with the pink and by putting the white on there I thought it was going to be um, a really pretty um, now black is really good for toning down anything so I've turned to black but I did not want just areas of thick black and I did want to introduce some roundness bits of roundness so I've been to the stash and I came away with this now I thought that's a bin bin hat there I thought I might do some wefts and as you can see I've prepared this bit already I might do those as wefts so I have the black the, the um, richness of the black put that one there and that there um, and I've also got the pink and other little colours like grey turning into purple and then white and all those colours are in these pieces so I have cut some out just to try them like that along there. Now I also tried placing them along here for the weft threads. See that there, but it looked too much, too much. And I like the idea of the pink showing through. So back to the stash again and I found this which is the greeny grey version of this so the flowers and the colours on the flowers are basically the same as we have here so I've cut some of those out and I thought I'm going to weave maybe in and out with this lining them up Right, so I'm going to spend some time now just working out this. It'll be interesting to see what I do use. There was also this as well. Now, 
this is a nice colour and it's brown but it goes very very nicely with the pink once again we have the flowers or maybe all of them just alternate them right so I'm going to spend some time doing that and hopefully next time you see this these might even be in position so this took ages to do I put the black down here I've got one two three strips of black and pink and these are the warps the warp threads I put down first and pinned them at the top and then I just wove as we normally do under and over and under with these the like green and pink ones um, and then I filled in any gaps between just going under and over um, and that is all I did now fortunately this um, I have cut some in half some of the strips and um, I've got a nice contrast between thick and thin so that is making a nice contrast now I've incorporated some little bits of white as you can see here um, I don't know how far down you can see I'm just going to move that up very very gently and you can see on the screen that there are several areas of just plain white now that is to break up the busyness of all the patterns it's to add a contrast now luckily some of the flower the brown I've got whole areas here of plain and that is just how that worked out so the weaving is still prominent looking down on it as I am so the weaving is still prominent and one of the nice things I'm just going to make this bigger one of the good things I should say is that on the wonky ones um, and I think this one where am I um, where's that little one there this one was the one that was really wonky like that well because I've put the the warps and the weft down straight it straightened up some of these edges and this part here I'm just going to ease this up now um, oh I'm twisting it right this corner here was the corner that had all the joins if you remember all the joins you can see you can still see them here on the border so those that scruffy bit there which wasn't too bothered about actually but it's been covered up so it's a great way of of leveling up um, anything wonky that you've got going on on your patchwork um, any patchwork really if you do this so I have stuck um, to the the weaving so we have the this weaving now going on we have the cardboard weave weaving and against fabric weaving so I'm wondering now if as I sew it down well, there may be another way of incorporating some even more weaving who knows so that is where I am at the moment now I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller I'm not actually going to tack across all these because these pins are so long I think I said they were two inches long because they're so long they're actually holding it all down nicely what I'm going to do though I found this as well I'm going to back it with just a little bit of this and this is all scrappy as well so I'm going to have to separate this I'm going to add this to the back just to give it a little bit of padding something extra and then I will cover that with this so I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit worried about moving this 
So I need to tidy up the back and put this down. Oh, that's in the way. Put this down. I need to trim the, these seams and then cover up just the bit in the middle, not the borders, because I'll probably change the borders. I'm going to cover it up like so and then I will oops with this scrap it's very fine polyester this will do the job nicely and it won't be shown I will then cover this up the wadding so I've now got three layers for quilting and this will be pinned down pinned in place now I will probably tack this well I know I will tack this all the way round the edge to hold it down while I work it and I'll do some tacking across here to hold that down I'll just stick a pin there so the tacking will be as I've just said all the way around the edge to hold it firm and then across the center like so just to hold it and then it will be ready for sewing now I'm going to do it's a bit heavy to, and big to keep turning over at the moment I'm going to start with long stitch now if you remember we did long stitch in the last project I think and all that is is a long running stitch or um, or a long slow stitch no longer than quarter of an inch to half an inch but it's really nice and I think this will take a long stitch just a little update this is as far as I've got this needs a long a long fine needle with a nice sharp point and a large eye to take the thread um, but any needle that you have that suits you then um, go for it at the moment I'm doing a weft along let me see along here oh that's a weft to me but it's looking like a warp to you um, and all I'm doing is the long stitch so no longer than half an inch and the nice thing is like this and the slow stitch the running stitch is that when you cross over you get another pattern you get a box like effect every time you cross the stitches you get a really nice um, boxy effect and it's lovely so the so stitching I has been done the long stitch the running stitch or the slow stitch whatever you want to call it has been done there's a bit of light there isn't there I hope you can see this so I'm just going to move it down slowly um, yeah I'm not very good at this oh gosh I can't do it <laughs> So move it over here so that is it so that is a fabric out of scraps now I haven't finished yet I'm going to make this a bit bigger now so I'll hold your that's it now well, that's better you can see it close up now you see the stitches there wonky ones as well where's that uh, sometimes it's hard to work out Oh, there's a wonky one there but that doesn't matter um, don't get so wrapped up and lost in the rules it, I mean there aren't any rules in your own rules of perfection that you lose the fun okay the most important thing of all when you're doing your, your textile art is that you enjoy it and forget about rules unless you're working for an exhibition or examination you must get bored with me saying that but getting back to this do you remember the, the long bit um, this bit here yeah, uh, no it wasn't that bit it was the, that piece there that is longer than any of the others because I absent-mindedly didn't trim off the loose bits here the loose ends so it should actually be that size but I forgot to trim the ends off and I've sewn them in so that's given that a really long look probably twice the length of that piece there but um, it's quite nice because they're all different sizes now 
And what all I'm going to do now to stop these to stop this falling about see that one's coming out already I'm just going to push them under as far as I can get but I'm going to weave them now from the top so where are we here if I can follow the weaving pattern so that's over under over under over under right I don't think it's going to be exact but the main thing is as long as I can secure them and I'll, I'll make this bigger and you might get a, an idea of what I'm doing so it's probably not that clear so right I'm going to come under that one over that one um, see if I can get that bigger for you there over that one so over under over under over under lovely and what I've had to do several times with this because it's so thick is actually use the pliers to pull the needle through I thought I was going to have to do it then right so that's the first and over there and the last one over and that's finished there we go and that one's finished so the ends are now tied down doesn't look very neat on there does it so I need to tie it off a couple of ends around around the side and then that is finished I think I might you see these little gaps here um, these little gaps here I might fill in with stitches I might leave I might add a little bit of surface stitchery or I might leave it as it is I don't feel that it's finished um, <laughs> because I haven't got anything shiny on well apart from these I haven't got anything shiny on them no I, d I really don't I really don't want to overdo it do I it's um it's um, already very fussy anyway I'm going out now I've put this on the wall and I'll be back after I've made my mind up whether to carry on do some more stitching or just finish it here it's a lovely weight I'd actually make a nice sleeve on an outdoor coat or something anyway I'm off now and I'll be back yes. shortly now as you know this is for a class so I don't want to take this any further at the moment I do need to make it up into something it's still on with the pink border but um, until I really work out which um, what direction the class is going in and what their needs are I can't really make it up um, what I have done though or what we have done with this we've made a piece of fabric and this now measures um, 19 and a half inches that way by 15 inches that way so it has actually shrunk a little bit and we've made a whole new fabric from scraps just by way of recap everything on here uh, including the, the thread as well were leftovers in my bird's nest of, of scraps of pieces of yarn threads um, these as you know all these pieces were scraps little lengths of scraps which were woven on a card loom now I do I mean you don't have to do what I've done the 12 the 12 pieces like this um, I'm going to make it bigger because from here you can't you don't really get a, a very good look at the weaving the weaving in some area at a distance looks as if it's got um, eaten up into the background so there we are if I move that over there there are some of the little weaving gosh my hand looked enormous then <laughs> little pockets of weaving 
that we're done um, initially. Now, ah, oh, I'd forgotten about this. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller now. So the gaps that I had um, between some of the fabric pieces, I filled in here with raised chain band. Now we did raised chain band before, and it's a beautiful, beautiful stitch. So I, I did some pieces here to fill in the big gaps and I think that is a lovely effect and I think if I had more time I might actually have put these bands all the way down I'm not sure but other areas because it was looking very very flat I've also done um, some feather stitch as well in different places but I've added just a tiny strip, just a few little beads of purple um, beads. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. And these were just to fill in other gaps, and they're all purple. And I've only got them in one, two, three, one, two, three, in four places. And just the tiniest, you can see there just the tiniest piece and it just adds a little bit of sparkle when the light catches it and just a little bit of interest and of course not forgetting the texture there so this is the finished fabric um, <clears throat> and I just think it's a wonderful thing to do with the scraps you don't actually have to do the weaving but this is a weaving project uh, you could even do this with just ordinary squares of fabric or um, piece together fabric but I just really enjoy weaving it's something that I really enjoy so um, this is the start of a course as I said on weaving I might include um, another lesson or two on weaving but I don't really want to bore you it's all very small weaving but it's just a, as I said it is a great way of using up threads and of course like the pieces that I showed you earlier on from the tote bags where it was used as a background you could now use this for your embroidered design um, let me see what I've got here right I have these not for this but for something else so on the top of this you could applique something you could applique like we did on the Matisse tote bag and the other one and I still can't remember who the artist was for the fish the star and the bird but this is all I did for that the other ones no hang on a minute actually this might not be a bad idea now hmm maybe not at the moment but so you would use this as your background fabric and applique over it so therefore you have weaving quilting long stitch or slow stitch you've got some raised chain band um, feather stitch there so you've got some stitchery going on and applique so in one piece you could actually have a lot of techniques going on this um, this here was the top of the curtain the curtain this was the main body of the curtain and this was the top some of you might even have this curtain it was very popular in a shop called Dun Elm several years ago oh yeah and a few leaves well I'm going to have to put that away quickly before I think oh no I know what I'm going to do I can't because as I said this is for a specific reason which doesn't include these but you will be seeing those again so I hope you enjoyed that and I do hope you have a go at the the uh, cardboard um, the cardboard weaving it's real really good fun um, and you don't need anything just the cardboard your thread your rag bag scrap bag uh, a pair of scissors a needle um, and there you go thank you for 
um, thanks for, to all the new subscribers and I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll see you again very very soon very shortly so take care if this goes out before Easter I hope you all have a nice Easter or a nice break a holiday whatever you call it I hope you enjoy it okay so I'll see you very very shortly bye bye